Greetings and welcome everyone to Sangfroy, Tales of Werewolves, Tome 1. Now, I have no idea if that's actually how you pronounce Sangfroyd, so I apologize to everyone if you can actually pronounce it, because you're probably cringing super hardcore right now. You're like, oh, that is, oh, I feel like I'm going to be sick. So I do apologize. But anyway, let's get this game started. We are one of two brothers that we can choose to play as. On the right hand side, this is this guy over here, he's normal mode, and the guy on the left, he's hard mode. So if we so we're gonna be playing as this guy because he's normal mode. But we can play as this guy and he'll basically make the game harder. But yeah. That's how the difficulties work, which is actually kind of neat, since it actually has a physical change to the game as well as um, a statistical change to the game, which is really nice. So this is how the the game is set up. These are levels. Each day is a different level. From five, apparently, can't go to one. Ah, oh, I think one, two, three, and four were the tutorials. I'm not 100% sure though. It's been a while since I played the tutorials. This is how the level select screen works, pretty much. You can just pick any level from here, and then you can go to play it. Although something that I do not like is that if you go back a level, because I'm already on eight, and if we go to six, it'll t if you start playing, you'll lose all of your progress, so you can't continue back to where you were. So. If I'm on 8, I go to 6 and I start playing at 6, then I come back out. I can't just go back to 8 because I'll have to continue doing it at 7, and so on and so forth, which is just not really cool. I would like it if I could go back to earlier levels with my new upgrades and traps and stuff like that, and then just completely kick ass. Speaking of traps and stuff, I suppose we should talk about that. When we load a level, we will start at daytime and we can place traps, but I'll get into that once we get into the actual game. First, there's going to be a bit of story. Well, actually, a loading screen first, and then a bit of story. The loading screen will tell you about the world and what it is like, and some information about enemies that you'll fight, what are, what their weaknesses are, and where they came from, and that kind of stuff. It's very interesting. So, let's just continue. Also, before we do that, let's actually just talk about the art style, well, the drawing here, and it's actually really fantastic looking. It's got a beautiful looking drawn style for it. And that's actually how some of the cutscenes look. Not all of them, but some of them look. And it's just, mwah, it's beautiful. Good stuff. Now onto the story. Chapter 4, The Rose and the Serpent, December 8th, 1858. Ah, well, hello to my saviors! Lord Almighty! What's the matter with your sister? Don't really know yet. Strange things are happening. Tell me about it. I was going to the W. Hood Company to get men to help me fix the bridge to the village, only to find out that the camp had been attacked. We found guys that had been half-eaten. Not a pretty sight. They say there are vile beasts prowling around here. We'll see about your troubles a little later, Miller. The important thing is to get the bridge fixed so we can save our sister. Joe, run to the village and get Dr. Lamontagne. Bring him back here as quickly as you can. Josephine is too weak to make the trip. Say, sister, don't suppose you saw Dr. Lamontagne in the village? My little sister's very sick and I was sent to get him. No, he hasn't been seen in two days. What's more, ever since the church burned down, the priest hasn't been showing himself. He doesn't want to see anyone. You know, there are people who say that your sister is a witch and that it was all her fault. I'm not surprised. So there's nothing you can do for us? The best I can offer you is divine peace. Would you accept my blessings? Bless me? Uh, I'm all yours. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alright, so in this convent, we basically have the ability to bless our items. So we've already gotten our axe blessed, because we're a lumberjack and we're okay and such. But now it's time to bless one of our bullets. So let's just click our bullet, and she will take 10 cents from us to bless our item. Um, it's an odd way for her to get commissions and stuff like that, but you know, everyone's got to do a little side work on to get some extra cash. You know, some people get a second job. This lady blesses bullets. It's odd. I'm just gonna bless six of my bullets, and now we can just return to town. Okay, so this is the village of Wolves Vale. We can just click on any shop to enter it, assuming it's not closed like the mayor's place, or burnt down like the churches. Oh, that's a shame. Let's go into the general store, shall we? So in this store, we are able to purchase new items and upgrades. So let's say, for example, 
we wanted to purchase this wolf fur vest if we were to do that we would get uh, protected for one HP hit which is really useful so now it's in our backpack which we can also sell back which for actually a very low amount that's ridiculous we purchased it for one dollar we haven't even used it yet and it's 50 cents uh, that's just how it is isn't it we could also purchase this store actually no we can't uh, purchase this store I, I apologize we could also purchase this gun is what I was going to say, but unfortunately we're actually really low on funds. So in the bottom right here, you can actually see how much money you have. I currently have 17 cents, which is not enough to purchase a new gun, which is 75 cents. It's very cheap. Let's actually pick up some more bullets. There we go. So now we've got quite a lot of bullets. Uh, 14 bullets and 6 blessed ones. Really good. Um, something that actually is, I, I find rather funny, is just looking at how, how the, the storekeeper talks. Look at his mouth. Look at that. Look, look at it. <laughs> it just looks so odd. But whatever, it's just, I, I find that cute. So now let's uh, return to the village and let's actually head home to start the main part of the game. This is the planning phase, and you saw a tutorial thing there, that's basically, this game is full of tutorials, like every time you start a level, it's pretty much got a brand new tutorial for you, so there's like non-stop information and tons of stuff that you need to remember, it's quite ridiculous. Okay, so this is a werewolf, or an omen card, and it's sh talking about a werewolf. It will give us lots of little hints about it. It has 30 hit points. It's very resistant to all personal weapons except those that are blessed. And thankfully we got some, we got six bullets that are blessed and an axe that's also blessed. And it is also weak against a hanging net trap, a spike trap, and a wayside cross. So let's get a hanging net. So to get that, we have to get it from down here. Actually, I don't think we have it unlocked yet. Uh, oh, no, no, there it is. Yep, okay, so a hanging net right here. We just place it here, and now, once it walks under it, we will be able to shoot it, and then it will fall down. But because you see this little red line here, that is its projected um, path to the barn here. So we need to encourage it to go under this little area. The way we do that is by placing bait under it. There we go. So now it'll see the bait and then it will start eating the bait and then we can just walk on over there and shoot the trap and then he will die. Simple as that. So now we've got three wolves over here which is a bit, which is you know fa fairly easy. The wolves aren't that difficult, it's the werewolves that you need to worry about. So let's place some wolf traps right here on their path that they're going to, well that's bait. Okay so now is a good time to actually show you that you can remove traps by clicking this little thing down here. You can just click it and then find the trap that you want to delete and then click on the trap and then it will just be removed. You can also delete all your traps at once by clicking this big X. It'll ask you if you want to, if you're sure that you want to delete all the traps, but you can say no, thankfully. <laughs> that would, it would be really weird if you couldn't say no. But anyway, yes. So let's place some wolf traps. You do not have enough money. Ah, darn it. So we can't actually purchase that. Oh, well. So we'll have to do something else. Let's try a hanging net. So um, that's actually something I should mention. All traps that require money will stay in the world until they are used. So if we place, say for an example, let's just say I was to place a wolf trap here and because it costs money and if no one uses it, then it will stay there until the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and so on and so forth, until it does get used. So that is really useful. So there is this, like, sort of toss-up between spending money and AP on traps that take money and such, versus traps that don't. Also, I suppose I should mention AP. AP is your little thing down here. AP stands for action points, and basically what amount of traps that you can place. So let's say, for example... We were to place this piece of bait you would see how there is a decrease in the little bar here that means we are uh, it's taken from our ap we take it we delete the trap and we get that ap back so we can place more traps so once this bar hits zero we run out of ap and that means we cannot place any more traps so let's actually place a bonfire here that's good and let's see what else is there to be placed around here okay so there's really not that much right now i think that's a good enough setup we should probably place maybe some more bait just because you know might as well place some more things since we have used ap now i believe if you actually do start the night without spending all of your ap you do get some you get to convert that into money 
So you can just also minimize the amount of stuff that you're using, for example, in, um, in you can minimize the amount of traps that you spend in order to get maximum amount of money. Okay, there we go. So now we just equipped that wolf furthest by dragging it from our little inventory here into the actual character screen. So also here is the backpack. There are um, there there are items that you can purchase at the general store and such that you can purchase you can place here and that you can activate in game. Say for example you purchased a health potion and you were low on health, you could activate the health potion from here and then it would work. In game it appears on your little hotbar in the bottom right, so it's very quite convenient to use and such. And now here is a little skill tree for you to actually look at and place some skills in. At pretty much every level you level up, at least that's what it's been so far. Maybe you'll stop leveling up so quickly later on in the game, but as of right now, it seems like every time you finish a level, you get a new skill point in order to spend on one of these little skills here. So let's uh, take marksmanship, there we go, so let's just spend that in there and then confirm. Now as far as I know, there's no way to respect your character, so once you, once you select an upgrade and confirm it, that's it, no going back, all bets are final, so make sure that you're heading down the right skill tree that you want to head down, otherwise you pretty much wasted that point and you would have to start again and such. So, seems like we're about ready here, yep. Okay, so let's start the night. Alright, so we're finally in game, and there is a lot of information on this HUD that I feel I should try and explain, but it's going to take a while, so um, let's start off with the graphics, actually. It's a very beautiful game, and it is just has a very stylized look that makes it look very cartoony and beautiful. With that being said, now it's on to the actual HUD. So, on the bottom left screen is your health and your ammo type, so if we click to continue that we can select what type of ammo we use for our gun. You press and hold control and then you will pull out your gun and then you can shoot it by pressing a left left mouse. The way that you reload is actually fairly odd. It will auto reload of sorts but you can speed up the process by spamming right click instead. So if you want to increase how quickly you reload then just spam, spam right click and it, it, it adds a nice little sense of excitement to it. It's like, oh shit, man, I gotta hurry up, gotta spam that right click, man, ain't gonna make it. And it's, yeah, it just feels really intense. Now let's right click that, and we were able to do a significant amount of damage because when the axe starts to glow, we pr press right click and it will activate a special sort of attack. So let's actually just quickly spam right click in order to reload that bad boy. Come on, hurry up, there we go. All right, now we can shoot this guy. He doesn't stand a chance. Once the crosshair goes green, that means we can get a headshot and deal massive damage. If it's just yellow, that means we will just hit them. Let's actually shoot, make him green. Actually, I probably shouldn't have done that in um, retrospect, because now I ha now the hanging trap that we set over here is being devoured, and I have no ammunition in order to shoot it. Let's actually try and shoot it really quickly. Alright, there we go. So we've got it fully reloaded, and we should be good to go now. There we go. He's still alive! You're kidding me! Oh no, you piece of shit. You're going down, boy! So, um, ah, damn it, he's dead, so I can't actually show you what I was going to say. If you look in the bottom left, there should be a number 20. That basically means what number the enemy will have to reach in order to attack you. So let me just, um, get this guy aggroed. There we go. So now you see how he's number 23 on his little bar thing. That means he's willing to attack me and he's not afraid of me at all. It represents your fear factor. The lower the number, the more afraid of you they are. So let's actually just shout. See, now it's 13, and he's not going to attack me because he's like, holy fuck, I don't want to mess with that guy. He just shouted. Did you hear that shout? It was insane. But slowly over time, they will get more, more accustomed to being around you and will be okay with trying to attack you. So let's just continue attacking him. Slamming. There we go. So now he's still at 15. That means he's not attacking us. Once he reaches 20, he will start to attack us. So if we just wait until he goes to 20... There we go. Now, you see, when it turns yellow, that means he is ready to attack you and he will try to wreck your face. So, you should watch out because he will try and kill you. And just like that, we are done. That's the end of a level. It's very simple stuff. I don't know what he's looking at. He's just kind of staring all doe-eyed into the distance. There we go, we have completed that level, The Rose and the Serpent. 
Nothing got attacked, we leveled up, and it was a, and it was a general success. Very good job, everyone. Very good job. Pat yourself on the back. We've did a we've done a fantastic job. The beast did a lot of damage last night. So I'd gone down to the hardware store in the village to get stuff to fix my mill. I was coming back, and since I didn't have any more tobacco in my pouch, I said to myself, it'd be a good idea to warm myself up a little at Jackie's. Say, Phidias, could there be something here that's attracting the beast? Except for my cabin, my barn, there's just your mill. But the attacks keep getting worse night after night. You're not hiding anything from us, are you, friend? Me? Hiding something? As I live and breathe. In fact, if there's something I would have liked, it would have been for you to help me defend my mill last night. The lumberjacks from W. Hood Company came to take away the downed tree that was blocking the main road. So you can easily get to the mill now. And then, if you help me, I'll help you back putting out your traps. With the three of us, it'll go faster. Sounds like a good deal to me. You can count on us tonight. We'll protect your mill. The H, uh, the W H Wood Company. What? I can't pronounce the W Hood Company. A tutorial movie for the nope. Not going to be interested in that. No, thank you. I've already watched those tutorials enough. So now we must defend the mill. The mill is a new area that we must defend. We have to normally defend our house or Jack's cabin and the barn. Now we've got a new new area to defend, which is just going to get ridiculous. So on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see Wave 1 and Wave 2. If we go to Wave 1, we'll see all of the enemies that will arrive in Wave 1. And then after killing all of the enemies, we will start Wave 2. And these are all the enemies that will come during the second wave. So we need to prepare for both of these. So let's see, what do we got here? We've got a werewolf, and he's heading straight for the mill. And so is... This Grand Wolf. Ooh, a big bad wolf. So actually, there's two of those Grand Wolves. So let's try and place some spike traps. Let's do that right here in front of this. We'll place it like that. And just over here as well, just in case they come from that way. So now we should get a good um, good range on there. So that should be defended for at least a little bit. And I suppose we could also add a, a wolf trap just, in, just to lower their health. It won't kill them, but it will damage them quite significantly, which will help. So now we've also got these wolves here. They shouldn't be that much of a problem. We'll just place a few traps. There we go. Two traps for them, and they're gone pretty much now. Now we've got a werewolf. So the best the best way to get rid of them is with a hanging net and some bait. That's my favorite way of doing it because they'll go under the, they'll start eating the bait, then they'll go under the hanging net, and then we can just shoot the hanging net and it'll kill them. So now where's this one headed? Let's click it. There we go. Okay, so he's heading to the the barn. I believe this one is as well. Yep, okay, so I suppose we could place a spike trap here just to help. There we go. So I think that's going to be all the traps I'll be placing for now. Yeah, that's, that's probably the best idea since I'm also currently running really low on AP. Now if we were to um, click the this button here, that would ex give us some more money in exchange for AP. So now if we just keep clicking it, it will take 10 AP and give us one cent for it. Which is just amazing, which is like one bullet, so it's not that much. Although there are skills you can upgrade in order to increase the amount of money you can get. I believe it's actually here. Uh, yep, Lumberjacking 1. The action cut lumber for the W Hood Company. I just just want to keep calling it Wood H Company for some reason, I don't know. Gives you 3 more cents for a total of 4 cents. So we'll get 4 cents from now on instead of just the measly 1 cent, which is ridiculous. So let's actually um, return... Uh, there's, as far as I know, there's no way to undo the amount of AP giving away to the, the wood company, which is a bit of a shame, since you can undo traps, but apparently you can't undo that. Uh, bit odd, bit odd. So now, let's start the game. Enraged. Certain enemies have a chance of turning enraged the more you attack them. Once an enemy is enraged, it's much more aggressive and is no longer affected by your fear factor. 
Yep, and those enemies suck. Now, if we quickly press tab, we'll be able to see which enemies are spawning this way, where they'll be headed, and which ones we should focus on. So we've already got two wolf traps set up to get the wolves, so we can just ignore those. So our main focus this level, or this wave rather, will be on the werewolf and the two grand wolves. I think those are grand wolves, actually. They might be just regular wolves. But anyway, those are the guys that we're going to be focusing on. So we're going to have to quickly run over to the mill. And I actually do believe... Yep, yeah, okay. So if you stand perfectly still, you will regain your stamina much quicker than if you were to be walking over there. And just look at that. Wow. We've already gotten both of those wolves within like a few seconds of starting this out. So yeah, that goes to show how ridiculously easy it is to get those wolves. Just place a few wolf traps and it's like, eh, whatever. It's no big deal. It's great. So now, we need to go focus on these guys. Let's actually select some holy bullets real quick. Where's the werewolf? It's gotta be somewhere over here. There he is! Hello! Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, he's messing me up. Okay, yeah, we just- Oh, now he's enraged! Fantastic! This is just getting better and better. Oh my goodness, is it my birthday? It's not? Well, could've fooled me. All these presents that I'm getting that are just so fantastic. Okay, so now we just need to stop here so we can regather, regather our composure, stamina, make it some- very nice attacks, there we go. This whole battle system is really all about stamina management. If you have, if you run out of stamina, your attacks will do pretty much jack shit all. So you want to make sure that you are, you have enough stamina in order to do it. So, because if you don't, then you'll attack slow, your attacks will do no damage. So it's just in general a bad idea to do it. So now I believe there's going to be a wolf that spawns up here, yep. And then there, there's going to be two wolves that have, head over to the barn. And then we should focus on the one, the werewolf that's heading to the house with the trap after that. Okay, so we've got our own little setup prepared. There's a wolf that should spawn right up here, which is going to be my main focus for this first fight. There we go. Okay, time to get rid of you, pal. Oh, smack right in the face. Oh, you don't stand a chance, pal. So you can see on the mini-map there, there's a little circle and then there's a bigger circle. The little circle is our detection area, which basically means once enemies get in range of that, they will detect us and then they will try and find us and kill us, pretty much. So you want to make sure that you avoid that as much as possible, unless you really want to get yourself killed. And this is just pretty insane. How the hell is he so powerful? Jesus Christ, man. Oh dear. Nope. Please get away from me. Please stop being enraged, or something like that. Uh, no, get away from me! Shoo! Hey, stop that! That's not very nice. Thank you. Okay, so... Now we have to quickly run back over there real quick to see where the thing is getting devoured, so we can, um, hopefully not die. Actually, it looks like the barn is our main priority right now. Yeah, it's gonna get destroyed. Yeah, this is not turning out as well as I would have wanted it to be. Hmm, we may have to actually redo this with some more bait placed. So maybe I'll just restart this, place some more bait in, in the second wave, and then start it again. So you might, if it is, then, oh yeah, okay. I'll see you again. Alright, so we're back. Hopefully I will survive this. I'm actually really low on health, so that's not good at all. Hopefully we can just reload this quickly enough before it gets to, before this werewolf up here gets to us. I think we did it just in time. Get out of here, Tan. Uh, there we go. Oh, dear. Oh, wow. We're wrecking him. Oh, he doesn't stand a chance. Don't stand a chance, brother. Oh, dear. Actually, he may stand a chance considering we're fairly low on health. Actually, yeah, he stands pretty decent chance at killing us. So, uh, hopefully we can just knock him back a few more times. Uh, nope. Get away from me. Shoo. Woo. That is lucky. So now we just need to go head to the barn. Actually, nope. The bait is being devoured over at the barn and over by the by the hanging net. So, yeah, now we're good to go for a little bit longer now that we've distracted them. Bait is a really powerful attack. Fucking Christ, they already devoured that shit? You guys are fucking ra savage. Well, I suppose you are wolves, so it should be expected. It did give us a bit of a breather, so... Good enough, I suppose. Let's actually just quickly reload our item, swap to regular bullets, since they're not- since wolves aren't demonic creatures, as far as I know. They may be a bit crazy, but they're not demonic creatures, so we don't need the holy bullets. Okay, yeah, we need to get some space here. There we go. And goodbye to you, my friend. Okay, could you please just die? Ah, shit, no, not me! I'm not talking about Jose here, I'm talking about the wolves. 
The wolves can get enraged? Shit, I didn't know that. Oh, get away from me. Get into the trap. Damn it. You're horrible. Okay, just, I need to make my way into the trap. No. Get into the trap, guy. There we go. Follow me. Get in here. Get in here. Would you make your way in here? Oh, crap. Now my house is getting wrecked. No, 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 no. I need to get his attention. There we go. That worked. Oh dear, that was a bad idea, actually, now that I think about it. Oh dear. Do I have any other hanging traps around here? Nope. Okay, fantastic. So this is just going to be me versus a giant wolf and his crazy sharp teeth and all that. Fantastic. Hey, wolf, where are you? You're over there somewhere, aren't you? There he is. Hello. Yes! Sweet. Headshot. You quick no, no, no. Get away from me. Oh, sweet, lucky. Oh, shit, no! This is not gonna turn out good for me. Oh, get away from me. No! Oh! Yes! Sweet. Okay, quickly reload that. Now that he's trapped in the wolf trap, we can just headshot him real easily. Oh! Easy! Sucked in, bitch! So you saw how I shouted to him and to get his attention. That brought him over to me, and then that he went to go find where I was in my last position. That gave me time to strategically plan out shooting him, shooting him in the face, and that allowed me to successfully win. So, yeah, there's a lot of strategy involved in this. So if you're not really good at strategy stuff like me, then this is going to be a tough-ass game. So, yeah, I think this game is rad, but oh man, does it get pretty difficult. I've heard the actual length of this game is also really long. Uh, the general reports coming in for how long this game is, is about 10 to 11 hours or so. So it's, you know, it's pretty amazing in terms of bang for your buck and all that. And yeah, so that's about it. This has been Sang Froy, Tales of Werewolves, and it's been pretty amazing. Each new level or so, you'll get a new trap to unlock, and you'll have new items and things to in to put into your strategy, and it's... Yeah, these are, this has been my first impressions of the game, and it's been pretty amazing. So thank you for sticking around, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and GG.